Hi there, this is Charlie and today I'm going to be talking about improving email deliverability from your website. You'll see that um, I'm trying a new format here and I'd really like your feedback on, on how, how you like it. Uh, I've actually spent a little bit of time and done up a couple of slides to talk to. So uh, let, let's move on, shall we? So here's some of the questions that I get when, I, when I'm working on people's websites. I'm not getting my password reset. Why am I not getting comments from my blog posts? Why am I not getting admin notices from my website? Contacts from my contact forms aren't coming in. I'm just not getting email from my website. Help! And you'll see up in the top right-hand corner there, I've got, it's all spam. It's probably what the problem is. Um, it, the first place I would go to look at these sorts of issues is that the emails being sent from your website are being classed as spam. Now, the good news is it's, it's, it's fixable. It might not be easy. It might take a little bit of time, but it's fixable. So I'm going to go through uh, the, where I, how I would go about looking at this and fixing the problems. So let's start. Uh, there are some impacting factors on all of this that we need to consider. The first thing is the IP address rep reputation. Let me try that again and I'll slow down a little. I know I'm talking real fast. IP address reputation. Uh, most mail services, ISPs, mail services, track IP addresses. An IP address can have too much history or not enough history. Now, what do I mean by that? So it can have too much history. If you're on a shared web server, which a lot of you will be, you share that web server and that IP address with hundreds of other websites. One of those websites might have been flagged for sending inappropriate mail messages to one of the ISPs or one of the mail service providers. By mail service provider, by the way, I mean Outlook or um, Google or uh, Microsoft. Microsoft and Outlook are the same, so you know. Um, Yahoo, that's the other one that I was thinking of. Uh, and if that gets flagged too many times, those ISPs are just going to say to that IP address, no, I'm sorry, I'm not taking mail from you. Just, just don't even try. And your message doesn't even get through. It can also have not enough history. And by that I mean it's too new. You're not sending enough mail to uh, have created any credentials with it or any any reputation around it and some mail service providers actually say well until we get a bit of history from you we're not going to until we can check your history elsewhere we're not going to allow mail to come through uh, I haven't addressed how to fix that one I might do that in another um, video later that's a little bit more tricky but that's something to bear in mind uh, I, I've actually moved clients from a uh, a shared IP address to a dedicated IP address trying to fix these problems and it hasn't really helped which is just frustrating. The second thing that could actually uh, impact this are domain credentials and by that I mean um, are there SPF records, are there DKIM records and are there DKM records set for your domain. I, 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 I could try and go through what they all mean uh, all, the, all the acronyms mean, I'm not going to because I will mess them up terribly. Uh, but they are, they are records that get set for your domain that say this is my domain, it belongs on this server, it belongs to this IP address. If you have messages coming from this, this IP address, they are more than likely legitimate messages. Now what that also does is that stops people being able to spoof your email address and use another server to send mail on your behalf, which is a real problem as well. Um, one of the pro tips, and again, I'm not covering it in this video, but I might cover it in a later one, is using a subdomain to send mail uh, so that you can really say, if it's coming from this subdomain, it's really me that's sending it. The final thing that could impact it is just simply the quality of the message you're sending. Does your message contain too much HTML? Does it look in inverted commas, look spammy to the uh, spam filters. Um, in this day and age, it's actually becoming more and more of an issue I'm finding. Uh, but I find that if I address the other two issues here, how much HTML uh, or how much of the message is formatted with HTML doesn't really, well, it has less of an impact. I want to say it doesn't really impact. It has less of an impact. And finally, does your message contain non-flagged words? Um, and you know things like 
sales and free and those sorts of things. They actually can trigger a, a spam filter if all the other things if, if if all the other things align. It's like yeah, this looks like spam. I'm just gonna not let it through. I'm gonna send it through the spam folder. Um, okay, that that's that slide. <laughs> Now, the, the thing is, how do you test it all? Like, it, these are all great to know that you've got to do all these things, but h how do you know? Yeah, you can go through and you can look at things visually. I use a little service called mail-tester.com, and it's fantastic. Um, it lets me send a mail message into uh, this service, and it will then um, let me – it will it – will, evaluate the message and it will tell me what my message is missing or what the problems it finds with my message are, is. Uh, problems it finds with my messages are. There we go. Uh, and it's a great little tool. But the question is how do you use it all, right? I mean, it's all great and wonderful me saying, hey, go use this service, but how do you use it? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to quickly run you through how I do all this. Um, and now, I'm going to run through it uh, visually here go through the steps and then I'm actually going to go through the steps for you. So you're not going to get, going to get me saying, oh, this is what you do and I'll leave it. I'll actually show you how I do it. Uh, the first thing you need to do is visit mailtester.com and get an email address to send your emails to. I will show you how to do that. The second step is make sure you've got a contact form on your website and use the mail tester provider address as the recipient. Uh, so what you're going to do is instead of having that, that the contact form go to you, you're actually going to send that to this, this email address because then it will be able to assess and see what the, the contact form looks like when it goes through to you. Uh, then that you're going to go back to mailtester.com and look at the provided URL and check your results and then from there you can go and make the appropriate changes. So, without further ado, let me take you through this. I've just clicked through. What I've done is I've created a contact form on my uh, test website. Now, on my contact form, and I'm not going to go through how to set this one up. Again, if this is something you want to know how to do and how I've done it, put com put put a comment in the comments below and let me know what, what would be useful to you. Uh, but what I've done, you'll see here, I've got your email address, which is the email address of the person completing the form. Um, and because this is a testing form, I've, I've put in this extra field saying send the email to. Now I've set the logic in the back of my system up so that when the form goes through, it will actually send the form to to this address uh, that, we, that we put in here. Uh, I just thought that was a bit easier than messing around in the settings in the back. I, I like to make things a little easier. So I've got my contact form already set up. What I'm going to do is uh, I've also got mail-tester.com set up or open on my screen. Uh, and you'll see, it, I'll, I'll just refresh this screen so you can see that when you come in, this is what it looks like. It actually tells you what to do. It says test the spamminess of your emails. First, send your email to, and it gives you um, an email address. Now, if I refresh that screen again, You'll see that it gives me an e a different email address every time I reload that screen. So it's just a random uh, email address that's used. I'm going to copy that. Uh, and then it says come back here and check your score. But we've got to send the email first. So back to my contact form. Um, now the reason I want to use the contact form, I, I wasn't actually clear on that, uh, is this is actually going to go from my website. It's going to go from the IP address and it's going to um, use the contact form that you know I, I, people have been saying to me, oh, I can't get my email address or I can't get my contact form through. What do I do? Uh, so I'm just going to put in my name here. Uh, I'm going to put in my email address. So this is the email address that I want to receive any contacts to or I want uh, the person who owns this website to, to record as my email address. And then here in send email address to, I'm just going to paste in the mail tester address. And the message, um, and then the message uh, is just, uh, hi, I'd like to know more about your products. And services please okay and then I'm going to click submit 
Okay. And what you'll see here is it says, thank you for contacting us. We'll get in touch soon. Now, that sent the message off to that, that email address we've got. So I'm going to click back on this new screen. And I'm going to click on this then check your score link. Wow. How bad is that? <laughs> this is this is great for this video. This is fantastic. Okay, it's telling me that my email may never see the light of day. It's given me a score of 1.5 out of 10. That's abysmal and horrible and awful. And it's so good for this video. <laughs> If I scroll down the screen, first thing it says, it's, um, it's subject is new submission from contact. It's giving me the bounce address of my web service. So when you send an email from your web server, uh, it will actually use uh, the address that's associated with the web server in, in, in the headers of the email. You can't actually change that and you don't want to change that because that's part of the spam uh, checker that, things, that, that these things are here. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the message that we sent. It, it gives us who it's from and uh, the bounce address that it came from. So uh, like I just said, that's the web server address. And then we've got uh, the two versions or versions that are sent, the HTML version, which is what comes from my service. You'll see it comes from Charlie, which is what I put in. Uh, my email address that I put in and where I wanted it sent to and the message that I sent. It tells me uh, what the HTML version is without external images. This one didn't have images, thank goodness. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't have anything. So you can check that this is what the email is that you actually sent. Ah, spam assassin thinks I can improve. No kidding. The famous spam filter spam assassin score minus 1.5. A score of my, below minus 5 is considered spam. Wow. Uh, so here are the issues that it's found, and, and then we'll go through with what the rest of the inf information at the bottom here. Is it DKM? Remember, I said there 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 were the credentials on your site that you needed to, uh, or on your domain that you needed to make sure. Is it DKIM signed? It's not. <laughs> there is no DKIM signature on my on my domain. Um, the header is from different domains. That's okay. We can come back to that one in a minute. Uh, it, there's HTML in the message and it says here don't worry that's expected if you send HTML messages and honestly the score on that is like minus 0 0.001 it's fine and uh, the the DKM signature is invalid which is the same thing so again it breaks these out uh, underneath it uh, it tells me that my DKIM signature is not valid it tells me that my web server doesn't allow my 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 site to use uh, the, that IP address, uh, and this isn't uncommon, by the way. This is stuff that needs to be set up when you set your services up, um, and and they often get forget forgotten. So that that's okay. Uh, your DKM signature is not valid. Uh, we don't have a DMARC record. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't have done this better if I tried. To be perfectly honest. Um, my, my IP address is actually successfully associated with my, with my web server. Yay! <laughs> uh, we didn't find a mail service record uh, for webhost.geekgoddess.com, uh, which I will have to look at. Um, and we, we, we've passed that one. Uh, of course, it's assigned to a server. The, the, the actual host name is assigned to a server. Uh, my message could be improved. Um, this checks whether or not your message is well formatted or not. Uh, the only thing it doesn't cons uh, include is a list unsubscribe header. It's not going to because it's a contact form. Uh, if you want to get into some advanced techniques, we can certainly look at that in another video. Again, if that's something of interest, put it in the comments below and I'll have a look at it and see whether I can do something for you. Uh, we're not blacklisted which is great. So the IP addresses have got a good reputation and there are no uh, broken links in the in the uh, total. Sorry, in the email. Okay. 
Uh, now, what we've got here also, because I can send multiple email addresses to, to uh, that one address and we can test and see our improvement as we go, we have a link here. I'm going to copy that link out and I'm just going to save that into a text file uh, so that I can come back to it as we go through and start to improve these things. All right, I've saved that into a text file. <sighs> I'm going to scroll back up the top here and I'm going to actually collapse these as I go through so that I'm not so confused about what we're looking at. There we go. That looks a bit prettier. So the thing that I really want to start with, first of all, is the domain credentials. Uh, DKIM, DMARC. Uh, it hasn't checked SPF, but we'll also go through and we'll check that. Now what I'm going to show you uh, how to do... Oh, it has checked it. Um, the SPF record doesn't allow uh, the, the IP address to send on behalf of my website. That's fine. We're going to go and address all of this and fix all of this up. Now, um, this is just going to be to use the web server to send your email address. In another video, oh, sorry, to send your email. In another video, I'm going to show you how to use an external uh, mail service uh, that will, that you can use to send your email addresses. So if you find things are still getting uh, spammed, even once you get all this fixed up, uh, th there is another level that you can go to. And I'll do that as another video because that, that's, that's a separate process all on its own. Uh, so what I'm going to do is head to my web server and I'm just going to pause the video while I log in and get my cPanel account up. So bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do all this in cPanel. Um, if you don't use cPanel on your hosting provider or on your web server, please let me know what you use and I'll see if I can do videos up to help you with that. Uh, otherwise, have a chat to your support people and ask them to help you with this stuff because you know, they're the ones that are really the experts on this. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is our SPF and our DKIM and our uh, DMARC records. I say them really quickly and it sounds like I really know what I'm talking about, doesn't it? Uh, under cPanel, what you want to look for is the authentication option. Now, if you can't find it when you scroll through the screen, because there's a lot on, on, on the screen, always remember in the search bar you can type in authentication. Uh, under you'll see here we've got the ability to set uh, DKIM up and at the moment it's disabled. Now this is a pretty standard setting on most cPanel servers. I find um, sometimes if you've transferred your server or your website from one hosting provider to another, the DKIM record may actually be invalid and you do need to disable it and re-enable it and, and reset uh, the key. So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is I'm going to click Enable on DKIM. It says it's been enabled. I'm going to go back and you'll see that it is already enabled and the DNS check has passed. So now I have a DKIM record set. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Uh, it's telling me that um, my IP address has been allowed to send on behalf of SPF and if I sound just a little bit concerned there I could have sworn let's just go back and check because I often misread things uh, my SPF web host .geek goddess does uh, does not allow your server to use dogs today okay uh, so it's saying it does not allow it and yet if I go here it's telling me that, that the I, the SPF record is set up having a good look at it what it's telling me is that my my web server, the, the main web server that hosts all these sites, isn't allowing that through. So that's something that I'm going to go and check. Now, if you see this sort of thing and it's not associated with your domain name, uh, go back to your service provider and say, hey, I've got this problem. Can you help me out? And then the last thing we want to do is DMARC. Now, uh, DMARC, sorry, we're just going to click update here. And I've made sure that all of my records are up to date now. 
Okay, uh, so we've got to do a DMARC record. Now, DMARC isn't actually uh, a fully ratified protocol yet, but a lot of the service providers are using it, so it's really worthwhile uh, spending the time to create a DMARC record on uh, your web server. To do that, uh, you actually have to do it manually. You can't do it through this authentication screen here, but we do have our DKIM, we do have our SPF set up. I'm going to go back to the home screen. To set up a DMARC record, you need to edit, uh, add a record to uh, your, your uh, DNS uh, records. And on cPanel to do that, find Zone Editor. Uh, locate the domain that you're trying to send email from. In this case, I've only got the one domain on the server. Uh, it's learnaboutdogstoday.com. <laughs> and to click on Manage. And uh, then under Add Record, so sorry, I'll just scroll through. You'll see that I've got a whole heap of things here. Uh, you'll notice that I have uh, this this entry here, which was just added, which is the DKIM record. Uh, but we're going to add the D mark. So what we're going to do is under Add Record, we want to add a TXT record, a text record. Uh, under Valid Domain Name. As we did the, in my, one of my other videos that we've done recently, we just put learnaboutdogstoday.com. Make sure you put the dot at the end so it doesn't try to append anything to it. And I will make sure that I actually uh, – sorry, I'm just copying thing. I will put all this in uh, the blog post that goes along with this. Uh, in the record, we want V equals D mark 1, a semicolon, P equals none, and a semicolon. Uh, I'm going to add that record, and then I'm going to come back and explain what they do. And there's a reason I'm going to explain what they do. Uh, if I come down to this record now, and I click Edit, you'll see that uh, cPanel's automatically picked up that this is a DMARC record and it's asking us uh, what our parameters are. So uh, there's no policy associated with it. It is just a DMARC record at this point. Uh, with DMARC, you'll be able to quarantine or reject messages uh, based on optional parameters. Um, Basically, if 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 all the messages fail, it, the percentage of messages that meet or fail the check can be quarantined or rejected. Uh, if you want to know more about all of this other stuff, um, you can certainly Google it and do some reading. It's it's quite involved, and at the moment, uh, just a very simple record of no policy. Uh, and you don't have to worry about all the rest of this. The thing that you might want to find interesting uh, if you do decide to quarantine or reject uh, is you can have failure reports sent to uh, an email address. So you can send uh, yourself, have, have your web server send you an email saying, here's a list of all the messages that have failed the, the, the checks that you've set for your DMARC. Um, the other thing you can do is just have it send you a, a aggregate mail report I think it's once every 24 hours uh, to to yourself, so you can see all the messages that are coming through, or the, that you're supposed to be sending, and see what how they they're faring against your policies. I don't. The reason I don't is I got swamped <laughs> with message with with aggregate reports um, to do it. Uh, now, if you just want to edit the raw record, you can click on the raw tab, and it will give you exactly what we have here. But I just click on the D mark. So that's why I wanted to save it and then come back in because you'll see it automatically gives you a nice uh, graphical user interface that you can use. Okay, so we've done all of the things uh, here. We, we've addressed our DKM signature, DKIM signature, um, which was our biggest failure. That was minus seven. Wow. We did so well. Uh, and everything here basically was about DKIM, DKIM being uh, invalid. What we're going to do now, can you guess what we're going to do now? <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our blog. We're going to go to the contact form, reload the contact form, and we're going to send another message. I'm going to use exactly the same details that I used before. 
and I'm going to do the same message. Hi, I'd like to know more about your products and services. Thanks. And then I'm going to click submit. Again, it says it's sent it. We go back to the test, uh, the test screen here, and click the refresh button. I said this was received zero minutes ago, so it's come in. Well, that's better. 4.6 out of 10. That's, that's much better than 1.5 out of 10. Where are we still failing? We're not fully authenticated. Ah, okay. So now this comes back to uh, the web server's not got um, an MX record associated with it. Uh, let me go and fix that. Yeah, let me go and fix that. I'm actually going to pause the video while I fix that because th at, so th at this point, what I would do is I would be sending off a message to my supplier saying, hey, we've got a problem here. It's telling me that uh, the domain that you're using to send mail on behalf of my um, website uh, isn't authenticating properly with uh, MX records and SPF records. That really kind of needs to be fixed. Uh, and see what their responses are. So let me go and fix that, and I will be back with you very soon. Okay, I really need to get some Jeopardy music or something while I'm doing that sort of stuff in the background. Uh, so um, I, I made all the changes. I also went and did a quick test so that you know I didn't have to do this multiple times on the video because that's just embarrassing and horrible, and I'm sure you didn't want to be bored with it. The one thing I did find with mail tester is that you are limited to three tests a day. Um, on your on your mail so I've actually just paid a little bit of money to them using their micro uh, transaction system so that we can I can finish this video off it wasn't a lot of money um, and you know it's it's useful to have okay so what are we going to do again uh, we're going to uh, just complete this form because I want to show you how cool it looks now there we go uh, and hi, I'd like some information on your products and services, please. Thanks. Okay. So this is everything we've done before. I've just ref Okay, so uh, we go and check our results um, for the, the, the test email that we've just sent. And you'll see we've gone from 1.5, minus 1.5 out of, or 1.5 out of 10 to 7.6 out of 10 much much better it's still not it's still not perfect um, you're not going to get perfect that's the first thing I'm going to say is you're not going to get a perfect score um, but 7.6 out of 10 is um, pretty damn good a couple of things here that we can, we need to look at spam assassin things we can approve still um, again the where we're really taking the penalty is the mime HTML only header we're not really going to be be able to resolve that. Um, uh, because we're not including text versions of our email and we're not going to include a text version of our email. That's just the way it is. Uh, so that's where most of our minus 1.4 comes in here is that minus 1.1. And that's just something we're going to have to eat. Uh, we're, we're not quite fully authenticated. We're still getting a minus 1. And again, we found the uh, they found the SPF record, but it hasn't been fully uh, propagated through the internet yet. So that will uh, eventually resolve itself. Uh, and once that's done, we get um, you'll find our spam assassin or the the, the, the message de deliverability score will improve uh, again, yet again. Uh, and that's how you can test uh, your messages from your web server to see where the problems are and some of the things you can do to try and fix them. Uh, that's not all you can do. As I said, I'll do another video a bit later uh, about a slightly more advanced technique you can use. Uh, I've certainly used it on, on a couple of websites where I, you know, I'm getting good deliverability scores. The messages are actually being sent through to the ISPs. The ISPs are actually uh, accepting the messages. We, we, we can actually see all this go through because we, we can trace our email messages. Uh, 
and they're still ending up in people's spam boxes. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you think, oh, I'm just going to have to eat it. You might, but there's a couple of ways around that, which I'll, I, well, there's one good way around that, which I will go through with you in another video. So I really hope that's been helpful for you guys. Um, please let me know what you think of the new slide format at the front and whether any of the other things that I said I might do videos on are of interest to you. All in the comments below uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.